All right, guys, what's going on? So I'm going to do a quick zoom in on these tanks because they're not going to look this bad pretty soon. What I want you to see is what's going on here. This tank's starting to look a little better. You zoom in on it, on it really slow. But what you'll notice is the plants are greener. I don't have that ugly, ugly algae issues that I used to have. And I really haven't done anything in this tank in, in two weeks probably. I did a water change and I just left it. And I've lost some evaporation. That's the water line there that's below that uh, metal bar. And um, so there's not good trace elements that are normally in fresh water, fresh tap water that are good for the plants. But that tank's going to be rocking back. Just wait and see. I just that's just for historical record and then somebody complained about the disc is not really showing color you know I don't really see it I mean that that discus has amazing color there's one in the back I can see color on uh, these guys have good color there's a little bit of a glare and there's somebody hiding somewhere I don't I don't see them right now but here's the plan on this tank um, the issues with this tank are as following. If you see those stems there in the middle above the driftwood, those are from lily pads. There's a lotus tiger lily in there. Actually, two bundles. They have to come out. Uh, the star grass in the very front, off the right edge, let me see if I can, right here, that's going to get moved to the back. I want to try to have this right area like from the star grass to the right, more open. Uh, I want to put in maybe um, some dwarf sag that can kind of run around and compete with that um, baby tear. So that's the plan. And I want to get this as low maintenance as possible. And one of the things that's really high maintenance on this tank is that, that moss. If you notice that moss on that driftwood, I've got to do my best to get that out of there. So all the driftwood's got to go. I have another piece of driftwood that I'm going to move in there. That's kind of a really nice, small kind of stump piece that I'm going to put over here in the corner. And then the fish that are coming out, um, basically everything's coming out except the discus, the rams, I got two pairs of rams, electric blue and then the German blue ram. Um, and then that, uh, I want to say Gossi, that's Asian based. See that guy pacing on the back glass? He is a complete pain to catch. But that one's gone. I'm going to leave the Neons, the Cardinals, the Cory Cats, and the Beckford Pencil Fish. And then everything else is coming out. Um, so including like the glass cats you see there, the rasboras, the red minor tetras, the x-ray tetras or lemon tetras are coming out as well. Uh, they just don't really go with the, the scheme that I want or the vision that I have for this tank. And, uh, wish me luck. And, uh, today, what is today? Let me just record this date. So you guys can see uh, the beginning of the craziness. Today is Thursday, and I want to say it's April the 3rd. So uh, today I'm going to start making a dent on this tank, and then I'm going to put all this together over time. And hopefully um, you guys will uh, appreciate the insanity or the brilliance or... At least see not what to do when I finish this. <laughs> but hey, happy Thursday. I'm going to put all this together in, uh, in videos over time. So this is, a big, this is the vision. I just shared with you guys the vision. And then later on, I'll uh, show you what it looks like uh, when the plan comes together, hopefully. Thanks for watching. You guys be good. Later. So I'm just starting to, I just needed a hose to drain from here because I got tired of using a cup. But I'm going to get that about, this is a five gallon bucket. I want to get about two and a half gallons in there. And then if I have to, I'm going to aerate it with an air pump. 
based on how long it takes to get the fish that I want out of there into this container. Uh, and then I've got another garbage bag here that I'm going to put the driftwood in and the plants in and I just want to keep them moist. You don't want them to dry out. So uh, you need, if the driftwood dries out, all that stuff that's on it uh, could die. So I want to keep it alive and then let somebody make the decision to either pick it off or keep it or do whatever. But anyway, uh, i got to get out this. See if I can get a good picture for you. Look how, my, look how deep these roots are on this. And it was actually propagating. Here's a baby one right here you can see that's propagated. Okay, I'll pull this out. Watch this mother plant here. You can see the roots. Pull back a little bit. Look at that root going all the way back to there. But man, what a massive root system. And I'm trying to pull it so that I don't feel it just tearing. Look at that. It looks like an octopus. Look at that. Wow. Think that thing was happy? Dirt, folks. It works. Look. Trust me. How much more open that is with that driftwood out. I'm going to add a piece of driftwood back. But it's just going to be a single piece. I'm not going to have the tree stuff. The other thing that's interesting, notice how the discus are hiding in the back under the swords. So that's not a bad thing. I'm all cool for them hiding. But uh, look how much more room there is for the fish to swim now. Tank looks so much bigger. It's unbelievable. It's starting to look like a 120 now. Before it looked like a, I don't know, a 55 gallon. All right. I gotta get on it. See ya. So, get everything out almost. Gonna take it to the pet store, to the guy that I had the deal with, and guess who's off today? So, it's Thursday. He's not gonna be in until late Friday. Uh, these fish are gonna need a heater uh, because my room temperature is not warm enough uh, to keep them at a good spot. Uh, the good thing is I have a small heater right there that's perfect and I'll just take that and uh, maybe put a rock uh, between it and the plastic bag and the plastic bag is really just kind of a liner because uh, just to keep it safe uh, it's not watertight or waterproof it doesn't have to be because that bucket is like my shoes but so anyway what I gotta do I'm gonna have to take this heater out these shrimp don't really care uh, what temperature it is honestly um, and so and look the discus are starting to come out ironically when I had all when I was discus are smart you could not see them in this tank and so look look where we're at now just to give you guys an update look how big some of these catfish are down there see those catfish I mean they're like I mean that's big so uh, anyway Got a lot of good fish in there. Gonna go to a good home. And then uh, you can see the blue discus is coming out. The gossy, I can't remember how you say that. I gotta go look that up. But uh, that thing has hid the whole time. I did see some of the baby discus in here, which was exciting. And uh, I'm just gonna keep the neons, kind of blue, kind of a blue th theme. I will keep the glow lights and the neons and the cardinals. Uh, the Cardinal, Minor Tetras, the, those guys are going to go. And um, I'm honestly going to keep the Hatchet Fish and may get a few more to go with that guy just because they do well in numbers. But that, that guy is native of the Amazon. They're one of the few fish that fly. It's just so unique. Unfortunately, the Glass Cats are a native of Asia, as are the Rasboras. The X-ray tetras are, are Amazon based, but I just, as are the red miner, but they just, I got too much noise in here. I got to cut it down. So uh, the reason that, just so you guys know, the reason the hatchet fish are going to stay is because they're going to stay at the top 
and uh, you get a group of them at the top. They hang out at the top. I've got a good lid here. I'm kind of covered, so uh, I should be safe, but got to go to plan B. Uh, hopefully, I won't be at plan C by the end of the day, and uh, there's one I got to go catch. This is kind of what I got going on right now. So what I did is I pulled a bunch of the leaves like this. See how this is spotted? It's got, you can really see the back. But I'm just pulling those. The thing that I found, I didn't pull all of them. Some of them were good. But the thing that I found is that this, some of these just have a little bit of algae. So if I just, I can rub it off, like right here. Look, see that brown? I just take my hand and rub that off. What was happening is the wood was getting uh, flaked off by that moss and putting dirt in the water. And then anywhere where I see, um, let me see if I can show you, like right in here, and I gotta clean some of this up, but like, see this moss? It just gets in there and it chews on stuff. But the discus aren't happy with me right now because they're kind of in shallow water. And I did see the baby discus though. That was kind of fun. So, and then you can see how it's gunked up over there. So I'm not going to take care of that today. But I'm going to do another big cleaning later. I need to do this in stages because this tank is fully, well, it's not as stocked as it was. But there's livestock in here and I don't want to swing it too bad. But, but the goal is just to try to get these roots. Let's see where this goes. Now see that right there? So see this is, that's, that's good hair grass right there. So I just wanna plant those somewhere and get those going down on the floor. Uh, get some star grass growing over there in the back corner and uh, probably pull out, this is wisteria here. I don't really want that much wisteria. I'm not a big wisteria fan. So I'm gonna pull, up, pull these out and just toss them. They're not that good of pieces, but I will leave those in the back and then um, maybe put a plug of water sprite in the far corner and then just let that grow up in the back and then just try to keep low foreground plants like the hair grass, let it cover everything else. Okay. All right, these guys are gonna get mad at me if I don't, like Big Blue, he just went back in the back, but I just, there's no sense in doing anything with that. And I'm not sure how much of this I'm gonna keep. I'm just gonna keep a few pieces because it, it's, it's a rapid grower. So, uh, and I might take some of that Glossa there and use that as a sprig to get it, uh, see if I can get some of that going. All right, I gotta get busy. Uh, it's gonna be a long video. And then these guys are, I put a piece of slate down there, put the heater on, and then set it at a lower temperature. And I wanna give you guys an idea. So here, see how big the, the catfish are? I mean, that one guy right there, he's every bit of four inches. This guy right, right here. Anyway, glass catfish are huge. A lot of good fish in here. I'm not going to feed them today. And then see, I set it at 78 because nobody in here really needs it warm. And that'll give them more oxygen and plus kind of slow their metabolism down. But, uh, all right, these guys are mad at me, and that's the guy I want to catch right there. He's coming out, and I'm probably going to put him in the 33 because he'll wreak havoc in the bucket uh, until I'm ready to take him in. All right. Fun There's baby discus right there. Kind of cool. These two really like this tank, and she's really gone a violet blue to catch his eye um let me pull back all right so i just had one of the lights kick off but i'm actually going to turn that back on after this video but this is kind of it i just uh 
just kick the pumps on so that's going to all clear up i'll do this again after that finishes but here's this tank uh this tank here's a mess and i've got plants that i'm going to take somebody that i've got floating in the top but but anyway um and if shipping was free i'd send it to you but um it's not so it's not even worth you getting it from me you should uh, find somebody in your local area who will just give you clippings if, uh, if you're starting off new or if you need some new. But look at this, look at this little guy. Look at that. I like it. I like it a lot. Looks healthy. It's a good sign. Fingers crossed. All right, this tank has six discus in it the size of my hand. I know it's hard to believe. But these guys can hide better than anybody. And they're smart. They're almost as smart as that, uh, that, that Gossi Cara. There's the, there's another one, baby discus. And there's, I put four in here, so I'm fingers crossed if I see another one, I'll just be ecstatic. Um, that was about a week ago. This is that piece of driftwood, if you guys go back to the channel, that was at a different angle, and it was right here, and it was, flaring up and hiding this pipe. I did it that way because that notch is so cool, the angles. And all I really wanted is I just wanted a divider uh, to separate the foreground and the background. And I didn't try to center it, I just tried to, I think, hopefully it's not dead center. Looks like it might be. And if it is, it's supposed to be a thirds. So you're supposed to be off like, you know, 40, 60, 33 here, 66 there. But a mono has the big thing on the, uh, he calls it the thirds. And there is the fish that I wish to catch. There is my nemesis. That is my great white uh, whale. Anyway, and uh, yeah, that's, that's quite, quite painful. And he knows I'm after him because when he saw me, he like took off and hit again. But I, I'm going to get him late at night or early in the morning. And then I'm just going to move him to this tank. And then he's, he's toast in the 33. He can run, but he can't hide. Here, he can run and hide. So that's the danger if you have a large tank. Just so you guys know, catching small fish in a large, heavily planted tank is all but impossible. So... Um, Anyway, I'm going to let all this clear up. I'm going to kick the highlights on and let the plants kind of absorb some of the uh, stuff I put in the water. I did a Flourish Excel dose because I, I want these foreground plants to really kick it and give it time. But yeah, that's it's just going to keep getting easier. The only other thing I need to do is I need to fix the crack on the glass. And I will try to get to that this week as well and show you guys how to that, do that. How cool is that? I promise I didn't like pulling them out of a bucket. <laughs> Those guys know how to hide. You just wouldn't believe it. They're smart. But the blue, notice you can see the blue. You can see some color. It's just how they turn. Life's that one right there closest to me. When it turns and the light hits it just right, the blue really kind of comes out. And then that guy's golden. But how cool is that? So look, now I'm really... So I'm showing off the fish I want to show off. Look at that. And then the neons kind of accent. The neons are good dither fish, as are the Beckford pencil fish. But look, now see that guy's kind of thinking about hiding, and so is this guy, but they need some food. And then look, here's the two baby discus. I just saw one right there in the corner. Oh, there, there they are. I'm gonna put some food in here, and then I'm gonna do a big water change tomorrow, and then see like this dwarf or this, sorry, not dwarf, but just the hair grass. I want that to fill in here and then some of this stuff to run. And that other stuff can just fight in the back. And I don't even care about it. So, but if that goes good, and I may need to put some uh, root tabs in for these swords to help them really boost up and get full. But th the discus are happy, man. Tell me that's not some happy discus. Look at the color on those. And you can't even hardly see through through there because of all the bubbles. But uh, and you can see that one in the back hiding. It's like right right there. 
but the the neon's really pop now too so how cool is that all right i'm gonna get some food in here for these guys and see if they'll be happy i'm liking it i'm liking it i'm liking it a lot Not too shabby. Okay, the only thing I don't like, heater right here, it's going away. I'm gonna replace that with two uh, cobalt aquatics heaters. So, put two big ones in the back, one in each corner, and I should be good to go. Go we'll call it. I like the high door inline heaters. Problem is, is that you have to plumb them and um, you don't get the cool digital readout that you get with the heaters from uh, Cobalt Aquatics. So anyway, not a perfect world, but it is what it is. I don't know that I need to do any plumbing after my uh, fiasco with the uh, FX5 hose valve coming off. These guys are getting into each other's grill because I just did a water change and I think there's maybe some uh, somebody's wanting to nest is my guess, just a guess. But he has a beautiful goal. The colors on him are amazing. Um, just so you can see it. He has incredible. You see he, he kind of brightens up with the bars whenever he's a little nervous. When someone's in his grill, this guy's darkening. You can see how dark he is. And I don't know. I don't know what will happen here. But there's, uh, there's one of the baby discus right there. And I'm going to put all this together in a video for you. been a busy day. I'm still not done with this tank. But, you know, for a first step, it's not too shabby. And, uh... These guys are all down here doing well. I'm checking on them. Probably not going to feed them because they're confined. I'll add some uh, fresh water in there tomorrow for them and uh, get them to the pet store. So, later. Thanks for watching. Happy Thursday. Let me know what you guys think about the new skate. This is going to fill in with Glosso and hair grass and whatever. And I'm probably going to pull some of this tomorrow. And get all that algae out and then reseed the uh, glossal stigma, the hair grass, and then the dwarf. Or that's not dwarf, sorry, that's not HC, that's just baby tear. Uh, but anyway, you guys, thanks for watching. Later. Happy Thursday.